So I want to welcome you to Lucindo's special open forum. Uh, we call it New Frontiers in Economic Development, featuring Ridvan Kamil, who's uh, quite, as you know, or we'll find out, a very innovative governor of West Java. Um, we also welcome Indonesian Ambassador Rosan, our friend, uh, leading representatives of US companies and universities operating in Indonesia, officials from the State Department and USAID who work on Indonesia or projects, development projects, assisting Indonesia. And of course, our members and audience who are keen to know more about modern Indonesia. Thank you all for coming. Yusindo was created because despite Indonesia's size and importance, most Americans know far too little about it. Even though a lot of eye-opening things are happening there, such as just one example, an economic growth rate over three times that of the United States. So those of us that have been involved with Indonesia for a long time, that's uh, astounding. I mean, if you go back pretty far, it was Indonesia's hand outstretched for help from the United States. And now they're triple our growth rate. So we have to not only know, know more about Indonesia, but we have to adjust our minds to the new uh, reality. And it's gonna get more that way. Um, so our, our perception is based on these outdated assumptions about Indonesia. And a lot of Americans have no perception about Indonesia at all. Therefore, our programs such as this event are one of the best ways for interested Americans to hear more about developments in Indonesia directly from modern Indonesian leaders, such as Governor Ridwan. He is governor of West Java, Indonesia's most populous province with over 50 million people, larger than a great many countries. He is US educated, with an MA in urban design from Berkeley. One of Indonesia's biggest social influencers, he has 20 million Instagram followers, one of the highest in Asia, maybe the highest, um, and uses social media to promote, promote his innovative policies, which I'm sure he'll tell you about. Um, he established the largest digital governance bureau in Indonesia and reformed village governance in a great number of villages in West Java using digital technology to transform its development sectors. He's seeking to attract investment in high-tech industries such as electric vehicles, renewable energy, chemicals, food processing, and digital-based enterprises, among others. Governor Rubman, thank you so much for being with us today. I now like to invite Yusindo's US co-chair, Ambassador Bob Blake, former U.S. Ambassador to Indonesia, to give his welcome and his personal introduction of Governor Ridwan based on his direct association with him. Bob? Well, I want to add my own very warm words of welcome to my good friend, the governor, to Ambassador Rosan, DCM, and many, many others here. And also want to say a very warm welcome to our new digs here at Usindo. This is we're so this is my first time at, at this great conference room, and we're so happy to have this uh, this great new facility. And hopefully that'll help us uh, welcome more people to these kinds of events. And so thank you all for coming. Um, I I first heard about uh, Governor Camo when I went up to Aceh, and I went up there for um, some anniversaries of the tsunami. And they said, oh, you know, you've got to go to the museum. So I said, okay, great. So I went off to the museum and it was really an impressive place. I said, you yeah, know, who, who designed this? They said, oh, Ridwan Camel. And I said, uh, who's that? I didn't know who he was because at that point I hadn't been there that long. I said, oh, he's the, he's the mayor of Bandung. So I, um, so I said, okay, I'm going to make up my business to go see the, the, the mayor. And um, our first meeting, we had a terrific um, one hour meeting and he said at the end of it, he said, do you wanna see my Star Wars room? And I said, sure. <laughs> and uh, the Star Wars room was a room that he had created uh, where he was 
had created a system where if anybody, any constituent in Bandung had any kind of a problem, all they had to do was take a picture of it. Maybe it's a pothole or maybe there was a lamp that needed to be fixed or maybe a corrupt policeman that was trying to solicit a bribe. And then they would post it on social media and the governor had a team that was supposed to respond to those. And if they didn't respond within a certain period of time, it would appear on his Star Wars wall. And that's how he enforced people, getting people to be responsive. And it really worked. Um, Bandung became known as one of the most uh, responsive city administrations. And you'll hear today how he's used uh, social media and his, and his own considerable social media following to really uh, advance the prosperity and, and opportunities for all uh, of, the, of the folks of West Java. And uh, for those of you who may not be that familiar with Indonesia, West Java is uh, Indonesia's largest province. So it's uh, 50 million people, almost a fifth of the population of the country. So what matter, what, what gets done in, in uh, West Java really matters for the, all of Indonesia but also, you know, I think a lot of what the governor is doing can, can really be um, a lesson for the rest of Indonesia in terms of how you address some of these really difficult issues. How do you use digital technology to uh, expand opportunities for rural farmers? And how do you uh, help satellite technology to help fishermen and many, many other things. And you'll hear a lot about that. So um, you didn't come to hear me speak. It is my pleasure to introduce our, my good friend and our guest of honor, Governor Ridwan Kamil. Governor. Thank you, Bob, for uh, the introduction. Uh, Ambassador Roslan, my dear friend, a uh, long time ago, uh, we are close friends and I'm happy to see uh, our existing Diplomacy in the United States getting much, much better. But DCM. And ladies and gentlemen, all distinguished guests. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Duan Kamil. I'm currently the, the governor of the biggest uh, population province in Indonesia. Indonesia, we have 38 provinces. So West Java is having a 50 million uh, population. It's the size of South Korea twice the size of Australia, the size of Spain, yeah, so. And uh, before I was uh, a governor, I was a city mayor, uh, the capital of West Java, uh, Bandung, for 2.5 uh, uh, million populations. Uh, before that, I was a practicing architect. Uh, I used to work for American a multinational firm in Baltimore, in New York, and moved to Hong Kong before returning to Indonesia, opening my own firm uh, and practicing architecture and teaching also at ITB. But I'm a very multidimensional person. Uh, while I was a citizen of Bandung, I created uh, three uh, so civil society movement. I founded, for example, uh, urban farming community. Uh, you know, mobilizing urban citizen to plan uh, greenery uh, in abandoned or unused land in the urban area. We founded also creative city movement because so many creative people resulting 2015, my city of Bandung awarded UNESCO uh, creative city network, uh, for example, in the design field. Uh, and many things. basically I'm a very, uh, hyperactive person. Uh, then came uh, a situation when I was really angry to the uh, administration of Bandung. So uh, basically I was an angry citizen, then channel my anger uh, to politics to become a leader. So at that time uh, I was nobody, but I'm using full force of social media to campaign in the end. Uh, eight candidates, uh, I won landslide, 55% as a, a city mayor. So I started reforming because that time, you can imagine, yeah, I, I was educated in US, I traveled around the world. Uh, Bandung was in the bad shape. Nobody walks the city, the garden was fenced everywhere, corruption news here and there, 
slow response of bureaucracy, so many things. So as an architect, urban design background, I start a project called happiness projects, uh, transforming the city into more livable, walkable, uh, creating event every weekends, yeah, culinary festival. Uh, and I, I bike uh, to work every day. Uh, the reason I bike because I can stop anytime instead of inside the car yeah, with Forader. Uh, I can call my department to fix this and that and so on and so on. So that's basically uh, my time as a mayor. Then uh, as a digital oriented person, I really and I strongly believe technology can help reforming the bureaucracy. So I started the smart city projects. Uh, I created the, the command center, what I call the, uh, the Star Wars uh, room, because <laughs> I designed it very futuristic. Uh, the reason is three things. I have to have a connection directly to my people. So I create a series of uh, complaint uh, response system. I have mandatory ask 30 department to have social media, uh, mandatorily asking them to post activities related to you, uh, to the uh, jobs and assignment uh, within the departments. Also, I have to observe the infrastructure, yeah, CCTV, intelligent infrastructure, and so on, and also to control the bureaucracy. Yeah. And this is my, uh, this is the governor comment center, the Bob that talking about was Bandung comment center. So 2018, uh, the incumbent of governor already served two terms because in Indonesian politics, uh, maximum two term per term five years. So I went to uh, run uh, for governor uh, 2018 and uh, four candidates and I got elected. Uh, and it will end this uh, September. Yeah. So I have four months to go. Uh, so far, so good. So I'm bringing many good news uh, before, after story, which is very exciting to share. Uh, I always did a, a, a survey to make sure am I doing okay in the, in the eyes of public. So this is record breaking, thank God. Last week, uh, approval rating 90.2%. Yeah. Yellow because I just recently joined Gold Car Party. So, so, so. <laughs> so uh, this is the news now from Indonesia. Majority is having a, a, a very uh, good mood. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. President and all his direction to us, the governor, the mayor are really solid. Yeah, I had lots of invitation for cabinet meeting, expressing the concern, the <clears throat> input from the regional level to the president, because as you have to understand, Pat Jokowi was a mayor. So we, we had the same frequency in dealing uh, technicalities. And he was also a governor like me. So handling the coordination role uh, bigger. Yeah, then that's why uh, I really like him because of the similarity in terms of uh, track record. Uh, now we are having a great economic growth. We grow 5.3% Indonesia. Uh, and my province is the, the strongest in Java Island. We have economic growth 5.45%. Uh, and with recent so many disruption, pandemics, uh, war, Russia, Ukraine, uh, we have a very solid uh, growth, yeah, uh, above five percent. Inflation also under control, and this is also very interesting. Every week we have to have a meeting of inflation. Mr. President will ask me, Paridwan, how much for the rice this week? Yeah, are you controlling the rice? Okay, uh, and Pajoko, we make a regulation. No public official can go overseas unless the inflation is under control. <laughs> so I'm okay because I come here. So it means I passed the test. Yeah. Uh, but Jokowi also and I share the same optimism, especially uh, in economic size. We are number 16. That's why we are at the club of G20. Okay? We, 
successfully held this uh, G20 summit in Bali in the peak of this Russian Ukraine war. Yeah. And this gives strong optimism to public as well. And we share the optimism. Uh, if we keep our economy like this for the next decades, 20 to 30 years, yeah, we could be top four, yeah, biggest economy in the world. So they, I think that's a very exciting uh, time today to 2045 or 2050. The reason why Indonesian love the words uh, the, the 2045 number because it is 100 years of our independence. Yeah. Uh, we were having independence 1945, so we are thinking maybe in 100 years after independence, this is something exciting uh, from colonized country becoming one of the superpower in the time frame of 100 years. So this basically the message we are sending to the whole people of Indonesia with at least three conditions. <clears throat> Number one, to get there, we need to have a peaceful transition of power every five years. So you witnessing we are doing okay 2014, 2019, no unrest, no street protests that creating a, a problem so we're doing okay and this is a beautiful thing because we are the biggest muslim country in the world okay but yet we embrace western democracy one man one food uh, uh, if you see a middle east there is a dynamism in middle east but in indonesia we're doing okay so we are hoping next year is another cycle of election of president vice president and all regional leader also let us survey, I'm at top four for uh, this national uh, election. Uh, let's see what happens, yeah? But wish me luck. Maybe next year I come back with uh, Secret Service team. <laughs> uh, so that's basically number one, that's why we are blessed with democracy. Uh, Indonesia chose one man, one vote type of democracy. That's why I come to play, yeah? Because in Indonesian election, you have three doors if you want to be nominated or elected. One, you are the member of political party. Second, you are fully independent, yeah? But there is no case independent candidate win any election because no infrastructure is very difficult. It's just an idealistic, image yeah i'm the third one i'm uh, independent before nominated by party because the party uh, they don't have the candidate that popular enough to be nominated mr anis baswedan the former jakarta governor also independent nominated by party the governor of east java uh, mrs kofifa also independent dominated by party so basically uh, this one man one vote create an option people like me coming from professional uh, being likable by people using all means uh, to send a message and people vote for us yeah. so that's number one i think uh, everybody needs to make sure indonesia stick to this uh, strong and healthy democracy yeah. uh, second condition to reach the, we, we call it golden year of 2045, is we have to make sure we keep our economy 5%. That's why uh, the whole country are thinking very hard how to achieve this. One of them are uh, focusing uh, to added value export economy. That's why you see or hear lots of news that uh, our nation limiting export of raw material instead of exporting raw nickel we would like to bring the investor creating added value products making factory uh, smelters and and sell it to uh, the global market in the form of added value uh, products yeah so this will jump five folds of the gdp if we do this and i support the decision of the, uh, the president we are sued by 
European Union for some product, but I think uh, yeah, every country also do this uh, once in a while. Yeah. Digital economy is very important, part of the 5%. Yeah. Uh, majority Indonesian holding mobile phone. Uh, and now it's exciting time because mobile phone is no longer a mean of communication. Now it's a mean of production. Yeah, I show you later in my slide. Uh, so that's basically uh, the strategy. Uh, the third one, condition for us to get to be the top for greatest economy is we have to make sure investment in human capital. So we have several problems and challenges. Number one, we have what we call stunting issues yeah uh, because of uh the uh, the babies uh, are growing not normal because the the healthy food is not consumed properly by the pregnant mom for example uh creating a, a generation that will be uh unproductive when they grow old so we we fight and but jokowi and all the administration make the stunting become one of indicator you are successful or not successful leader in the in the local area so if we do this uh, these three conditions uh, then the prediction can be achieved uh, why because other country in asia having what they call aging population japan losing 500,000 people a year uh, South Korea follow, China outnumbered by India. But Indonesia birth rate is still good, 2.1. So it means one mother have opportunity to still have two children and 50% probably female to continue the growth. So by 2045, my country will have 70% of its population under 40. You can imagine, yeah? So 70% of the whole population, we have to design it as the most productive, competitive human capital. That's why investing in education, reforming the bureaucracy is the number one priority for me as a governor. Omnibus law is a, is a, is a, is a law that bypassing hundreds of unnecessary law already passed uh, by the parliament. So it means now, first time in history, international hospital can open business in Indonesia. Mayo Clinic's already under construction in Bali. I'm inviting uh, American University also to, to open or at least sandwich program. This is part of you know, educating the 70% of our population to be uh, to that uh, point of 2045. So uh, that's basically why the mood is very optimistic in my country regarding this. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, you see this big picture uh, to be part of our journey. So as a governor, I always start with fixing my home. Okay? So I reforming my bureaucracy first. And this is my theory. We have what we call uh, governance 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. .0. Some of Indonesian, maybe 50%, still in the bureaucracy 1.0. It's very basic. It's, we call it rule-based governance. You cannot innovate because we don't have the regulation. That's the attitude. And it's very bad. When Uber came, for example, Uber already having a business, but regulation forbid because oh, we don't have the regulation. So it means you cannot do this Uber type business. So that's still happening. Now, majority is having the second one is stick and carrot bureaucracy. That's why uh, I've record 500 awards last five years as a governor. Uh, and uh, this is incentive if you're doing a bad thing, like cannot go overseas if your inflation bad, for example. So majority here, but the problem with 2.0, the bureaucracy thinks if you're not the public official, you cannot involve in deciding the best for our government. Yeah. So it means, okay, 
uh, you know, reward punishment, but very exclusive bureaucracy. So now I'm moving the last four years of bureaucracy 3.0, inviting all the best talent, come, come to Papa, come to governor, to be part of my administration. Okay. So I created three important government unit that never exist in other provinces. Number one, I created what I call West Java Digital Service. Yeah. Uh, copying the UK Digital Service. I hire 40 smart American UK educated uh, individual. I pay handsome uh, income uh, according to my regulations. What they do is just making apps. Yeah. One problem, one apps, 1,000 problem, 1,000 apps every day. So during COVID, the best management of handling crisis was West Java because we created super apps. Having 23 features of vaccine queuing uh, data, of uh, distributing the donation, the social security food, millions of uh, question and answer is so hectic handling coffee because one of the value of the leader is to simplify complexity. So I'm, I'm exercising that value. It's so complex during the first couple of months of COVID. So I simplify everything in one super apps called Picoba, for example. That's produced locally. Second, I created a government unit, anti hoax unit. This is the dark side of the digital era. Yeah, digital created so many opportunities, but do not forget behind the digital, there is a bad side that some of us forget. So I created this defense, line of defense. I hired 12 hacker quality uh, individual to tracking uh, fake news. And every Monday, five fake news, we, we inform to public. Remember, this is fake news. Yeah? Uh, so people prepare. And this is very good, decreasing the unnecessary and productive uh, time. Uh, the third one, I created humanity response team called West Java Quick Response because I think my, my existing system is too slow. So I created a system where there is humanity crisis, for example, uh, collapsing houses somewhere in rural, somebody got problem on the street, Within 24 hours, my team can be at the rescue, okay? Uh, and 120,000 cases uh, helped by this team, okay? On my behalf, because I said to my team, look, when we do things, we have to combine technocratic approach and populism approach combined. Sometimes technocratic approach, people uh, do not, understand, uh, but if to populism also uh, is not good. Meaning when you go, please tell this is from the governor. If we send something, this photo of me also part of this campaign. So this is like campaigning while working basically. So this is an example of government's 3.0, inviting non-government official, yeah, anyone who loves West Jaffa to be part of the new bureaucracy. Number four, balik lagi, Chup, we call it digital governance, of course, yeah, where we try to limit the human involvement as much as possible so I can move the bureaucracy more to the challenging task. Because I remember before I invent some apps for budgeting, process i need 200 people working just to input okay this input move to another room they re-input again it's very bad yeah so we created reforming because of west java digital service using this one highlight i want to show you i fight corruption within the bureaucracy using this digital uh three mayor got caught by a corruption commission in Indonesia because they got bribed by uh, give, uh, receiving money from 
uh, the public official who want to have a top chance. Yeah, they they they, they bribe the mayor. Uh, hey, mayor, get me to the top position, for example. Yeah. So this is what I invented. <clears throat> Every 4 p.m. Coba yang complex itu ya. Every 4 p.m. Public official in West Java evaluated 360 degrees by the supervisor, top, by the colleague, same level, by the staff. So the staff can evaluate the, the, the superior, okay? With at least 12 indicators. Yeah. At the end of the day, we have a big data. Then the data will give the status of your evaluation x axis your capacity your education your smartness your capacity y axis is about your integrity your performance your leadership quality yeah so if you happen to be in the box number one it means very bad it means you are stupid and also you are corrupt yeah computer will inform me there is a group of people live in the box number one. And after four years, thankfully, majority of my 30,000 government official now already moved to box number nine. So it means you are smart, you are educated. So every time I have an empty position, I said, Siri, give me <laughs> or uh, ASEP, yeah. Give me three best candidates for education head department. And the computer with big data, this AI, will give me three names. Mr. Governor, according to your criteria, PhD in education, good integrity, good personality, never have morality problem, and this is three names. So I can just blindly choose, literally, any of three. Because of this, the last four years, we were awarded the best bureaucracy in the Republic of Indonesia. So we were uh, outperforming all the ministry bureaucracy performance, outperforming all the 500 local and regional. This is to show you that you cannot rely directly on leadership only in, in the form of, of, of physical presence. Because if I'm no longer as a governor, I have to have a legacy that this uh, fighting corruption integrity must in place by design. So that's basically how I reformed the government the last five years. So digital also I used to leverage the economy, the underprivileged. We call it majority rural. Because now I'm responsible to 27 cities and regions. Okay. And when we say digital, majority is the domain of urban people, urban citizens, less in rural. So I created a two program. Uh, one, smart city, as I was in city mayor for urban. And I created a program, digital village for rural. What I do first, of course, installing the infrastructure, making Wi-Fi everywhere in the remote area uh, uh, of West Java. Uh, and creating eight program of digital revolution in rural communication with 8,000, sorry, 80,000 chief villages with one apps uh, using IoT to create a better production of food security uh, and so on and so on. Yeah. Uh, I install e-commerce in every village center, educating them so they cannot they don't have to leave the rural, but can sell uh, wider, uh, even globally. Yeah. So I'm starting educating the last four years, uh, like this one. We start using IoT. We we feed the fish using mobile phone. Yeah. Uh, before you have to manually feed the fish. If you have eight ponds, you have to walk across the eight pond. Yeah. Sometimes slippery during the rainy season. It's, not, it's very tiring. Now you just sit back, relax, cappuccino, and you're just pressing your mobile phone. In one touch, eight pounds projected food, okay? Double the production. 
without leaving home. That's beautiful. Uh, you know, uh, feed the chicken, plant the tree, deep irrigation also now I'm introducing big time everywhere. Uh, spraying the fertilizer using drone uh, is also happening now uh, in, in, in West Java. And last one is I created a vision of the future to my young generation that look to have a wealth you don't have to migrate to see you can now post covid you can work anywhere as long as you have connection have a digital knowledge you can have a business anywhere before the old mindset is i don't want to be a farmer like my father i have to migrate to jakarta to bandung to get a better life that's the problem because 60 percent my farmer also in ASEAN is senior citizen, 60%. So it's an it's a, it's a alarming rate. So now I said, look, come back to rural. If you don't have a land, I lend the government land. I have a bank. I lend them the money. And I have a company stayed on to buy as an off taker. So I created the first year, 5,000 register for this vision. But at the end of the program, only 1,200 passed the test. This is the, the group that has Jakarta income, but live in Kuningan, live in remote area. So I proved the theory. Post-COVID, you live in rural, away from disease. COVID is an urban disease. It's a density disease, but in rural, less COVID. So I said, come to rural, uh, less expensive making money like in Jakarta because you are selling your product directly online. You got picked by apps of picking up the like Uber food or whatever. So I inaugurate them. This is just my, uh, sorry, uh, local culture thing. People love to have ceremony of achievement. So I created, uh, so this, now I create a, a slogan to young generation of West Java that in the future, live in rural, make urban income, and seize global opportunity. Yeah, I think uh, if I get elected next year, then this become a revolutionary vision to young generation. And I think we have that. Why? Because during COVID, we found out three surviving economy. All economy was down except food business, except healthcare because of pandemic and digital. Digital was up 40% from education, meetings, anything, yeah. including my mom, 82 years old, during COVID learning to use uh, the line apps for communicating, learning emoticon. Sometimes she sleeps sending she meant smile, but she said, said face. Yeah. <laughs> I said, mom, what happened? <laughs> oh, sorry, it's wrong emoticon. Yeah. So 82 years old of my mom also by COVID forced to learn digital. So yeah, there is, there is a bright side of every disruption. It's, it's a new lifestyle. So uh, this is, this is uh, I show you, yeah? And this is the result. And this is my legacy. If I asked by media, Mr. Governor, what is your best legacy? I will show this slide. Before I become a governor, I inherited 1,000 poor village status. December last year, I declared zero. So in four years, we eradicate 1,000 poor villages because of this digital economy revolution in rural. So that's really uh, to show you, we fix the bureaucracy, we fight the corruption, uh, we bring also rural uh, uh, in digital inclusion. The next disruption, because as a leader, I have to sense to give a sense of hope to my people while also responding to disruption. One of the biggest disruption now that misunderstood is global warming. It's very difficult to explain global warming to to housewives in West Java, for example. So the way I do it is I will bring the reality check, yeah, the bad news. So I said, in West Java, global warming is already on our doorstep. 
What's the proof, Mr. Governor? Let's go to the north of West Java. Before we have 700 hectares of land, now become seawater because of rising sea level. And the people ask me, but we have land certificate and we have to pay land tax. But how? Because we don't have the land and how should I pay the tax? Yeah, so this is a real issue. So I created a program called West Java Resilience uh, Culture. Yeah, It's copying the United Nations uh, uh, logic of resilient uh, to any disaster and also global warming. Uh, now in West Java, we respond this global warming seriously, put a real budget before non-existent, educating in curriculum, uh, how to respond to disaster and so on and so on. Okay. Uh, so one of the concrete is now I make mandatory all the bureaucracy in West Java to use EV because uh, EV production, the biggest in Southeast Asia happen to be in my province of West Java. So I'm the first public official four years ago, three years ago to use EV. Only two options, Tesla or Hyundai. The Tesla is too expensive for government official. So it will be bad image. So I, I buy the one third cheaper, the Hyundai, which is fine, no problem. Now they copy all the leaders now following, the, even the police escort also using the EV. Yeah. And now it's become a, a trend. And Paluhut, uh, permission by Pak Jokowi give a regulation any Indonesian today buying motorbike uh, EV, they will get $500 cash yeah, as a subsidy because current price of EV motorbike is a bit higher. So to, to make sure uh, the market respond, we give subsidy. And as an architect designer, I'm using the populism. I design my own EV motorbike, more like classical. I don't like futuristic shape. I like more you know, Bober style. American style bobber. Uh, so, so basically, this is the policy. Okay. Uh, now we make mandatory also put the solar on the factory roof everywhere in West Java. You have to remember, we have 38 provinces, but 60% of all industry in Indonesia located in my province alone. So, yeah. So the 40% distributed to 37 provinces. It's a very big. So I have so many roofs to install the solar. And this is my policy to do this one. We're inviting also investment all over the world to do this green economy, green business. So this is also my highlight. We are now constructing the biggest solar panel farm floating on the water. Because technically, uh, water is zero degree angle. It's good for absorbing UV maximum. Yeah. Uh, and West Java also having the biggest reserve of geothermal because West Java full of volcanoes, yeah, creating so many earthquakes. You have to know Indonesia is the biggest number of earthquakes, uh, sorry, the biggest number of volcanoes in the world, creating thousands of earthquakes. It's a routine for us. So 60% earthquakes in the world coming from Indonesia. That's why we call dangerously beautiful. <laughs> it is dangerous but beautiful because according to survey the most beautiful country in the world ladies and gentlemen voted indonesia second was new zealand third was colombia so but this beauty you know eruption <laughs> creating problems so, uh, and this is a good news for, I want to send a message of this green economy. I was elected as a chairman for Renewable Energy Regional Government Association. So besides the governor of Mizafa, 50 million, I have 150 uh, uh, region and city ready to go 2050 net zero. Uh, Stanford University did a research. If you combine Indonesian solar, tropical sun, flowing waters, uh, wind, and uh, geothermal, Indonesia can produce 400 gigawatts of power. And my population can only consume half. 
So it means in the future, we need technology that we can export the remaining 200 gigawatts to the world forever, right? So this is, I'm hoping maybe there is a US enterprise that would like to see fighting global warming with us, coming as an investor in green technology, tapping the reserve of our renewable energy and make a world a better place and cleaner energy uh, on, on that part of the world, we call it Indonesia. So uh, last point I want to make before discussion is uh, when the media asked me locally, Paridwan, what is the biggest problem today in Indonesia locally? I said, we have too many fights over small things. Okay, Different president candidate, we fight. Some people die because of election. Yeah, uh, Different religion, we fight. Even we are the same Muslim, different way of praying, we fight. So I said, it's too many fighting. That's why I'm, I'm using my social media with 30 million followers combined. Yeah. One, to educate my people about technology, about the issues, about uh, things. Also to post my agenda like this, I have to post. Yeah. See some, my assistant will shooting uh, here, reporting. To clarify accusation, yeah and also to post personal posting. Yeah. Because according to Facebook, when I was invited to Facebook uh, headquarters, they put my big data, Paridwan. See, Indonesian people hire interaction if you post personal things. If you post official event, ribbon cutting or you know speech, small interaction. But if you post, you're riding a bike with your wife, you're holding your baby, going to grocery store as a leader, be yourself, jump, yeah, tenfold. That's why in today's leadership in the era of social media, it is now become a culture in Indonesia that a leader also showing the personal soft side of the leadership. This is like unavoidable in a society. So uh, because of number one issue is too many fighting, uh, I assure within my leadership, number one, I created a curriculum called anti-radicalism curriculum. So I educating, starting from school, that we have to keep Pancasila, our ideology. As you know, Pancasila is our ideology with five principles. One, belief in God. Second, humanity. Third, nationalism. Fourth, democracy. Fifth is uh, social justice. So the first in the country, province having anti-radicalism curriculum. We are the biggest Muslim country. Yes, we have dynamism, but I have to protect, at least protect the mindset of incoming uh, radicalism. West Java also launched last year the first curriculum for anti-corruption. So I want to educate the issue of corruption, not only by using technology in my bureaucracy or uh, law enforcement uh, to be bigger, but also starting from the education itself, that corruption is a, is a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, so this is summarize uh, five years as a governor, what I have been doing, uh, resulting in the good mood, resulting in the strong economy, resulting in transformation of rural economy, uh, resulting in the good quality bureaucracy, so I'm hoping uh, you can be part of the next journey. Yeah? And I'm hoping next year we will harvest the next generation of leaders coming uh, from good quality individual. Yes, I'm American educated person and that changed also the mindset because I live in US, I see things, yeah? not always good. Yeah? <laughs> I learn also the bad side of your society, but as a leader, I absorb the good thing. I make a lesson for the bad things and translate it to localities. Yeah. So for that, I conclude, uh, that's what happened in Indonesia. Looking forward for inside question. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Thank you so much, uh, Governor Redwan. Uh, we're now going to have a Q&A session from the panel table moderated by Bob Blake. Um, well, Governor, first of all, congratulations on, on just an amazing record of transformation in five years. Uh, you've really accomplished so much. I'm sure there are many questions. I'm going to ask the first question, if I may, which is I found myself asking throughout your presentation uh, to what extent a lot of the successes that you've had have been shared with other governors in other provinces? Because there's certainly a lot that other provinces could learn from your experience. Is there a mechanism for sharing that kind of those success stories and those best practices? Uh, I remember when I was a city mayor, I never get a chance to meet the governor, the previous governor. He's too busy. I'm asking, you know, informal time, an hour to hour, no time. So I said to myself, if I got elected someday <laughs> as a governor, I have to change. I have to embrace 27 mayors to be part of me. Coba tampilkan job yang kopi darat. So I created what I called uh, a leadership gathering every three months. Hmm. Okay, every three months. So I, I, I invite 27 mayor with creative way of meeting, yeah, uh, and educating and sharing all the thing that I explain is copying now everywhere in 27 cities with different technicalities, yeah. But to fight corruption by digital, but how to fight inflation together. For example, it's very simple issue of inflation. Mm -hmm. We have the region called Bogor. We have the region of Sukabumi, okay? It's next door. Sukabumi produce eggs, okay? A chicken eggs. Bogor people to buy eggs, they have to get from Jakarta before because Sukabumi export the egg to Jakarta and the Jakarta trader sell back the egg to Bogor, creating an expensive egg product. I said, using this meeting, hey, Sukabumi mayor, Bogor mayor, let's sit, okay? Make an agreement that Sukabumi sell directly to your neighboring uh, city, the egg. It's very simple, yeah? So by doing this in a series of different form, we have now in the five years better communication. In other province, governor and mayor, they got conflict. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, they speak on media, cursing each other, not in West Jab. Every three months, we have this event to make sure all the thinking, the mindset is distributed. Because not all uh, understand uh, the, the, the issue, the vision, and uh, the solution. So I'm uh, now having a great uh, political stability, very strong uh, in region of Asia. All right, please, Blair. If you could ident identify yourself, and I think we have a mic as well. Hi, Governor Blair King from USAID. This is really wonderful to see, um, both for Indonesia as a whole, for West Java, with my wife's late mother-in-law coming from, uh, from Bandung, born and raised in Bandung. It's wonderful to see this. Uh, it's also wonderful to see just as a result of the uh, decentralization and regional autonomy in Indonesia since 1999. Obviously, that creates the foundation. Not all leaders have taken the same advantage of it. In other places, it's decentralization of corruption, but you've taken advantage of it to increase the prosperity and of, of your people. But my question picks up on Ambassador Blake's question. You talked about uh, sharing this just among the other Bupati and, and Walikota within West Java. My question is, have other governors who under decentralization in Indonesia have the same authorities you do, have they been learning from what you've been doing, and do you have specific examples where other governors are trying to uh, to achieve the same sort of results that you're seeing? Thank you. Everybody except Ganja, right? You're not going to tell him. <laughs> uh, yes, many many occasion other leaders from other province come to Bandung learning. But I'm not offering because if I'm offering all my achievement, it seems like not 
well taken culturally as if like I'm I'm uh, apa sombong tuh bahasa Inggris yeah, arrogant. arrogant it's like 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 totally arrogant offering the achievements I'm, I'm not doing that yeah. but if somebody uh, some leader come to me Paridwan can we have MOU oh please come free all my innovation is free you can copy all the apps instead of you spending money making another app let's use West Java uh, including central government but central government copying my innovation for free they save like billion of uh, rupiah Uh, for apps creating a comprehensive evaluation of budget. So the central government make mandatory my apps to be used to all 500 locals. So so two doors, uh, central government co- using my innovation to create the same level of innovation yeah. for the country. Some come to me, come to my uh, capital learning one week, one month. Yeah, uh, Many places do that. I think maybe 50 outside west java uh, have come to to west java to learn uh, anything that they think they can copy so i'm i'm happy because you know power is is temporary i love to see what happened in west java also happening all over indonesia except yeah the central, <laughs> central java <laughs> Blair, I think the answer is we're going to upload this presentation on the chat GPT and then everybody can benefit from it. So, uh, all right, another one, please. Hi. My name is Kathleen Woodward. Um, I was in Indonesia 98 to 2000 um, researching the transition to democracy. And it's so heartening to see how well things are going 20 years later. So. I just want to remind everyone of that positive thing, even though you say, you know, some people fight, it could have been much worse. Um, but my question is about fake news. You said that um, you notify the public about fake news. I'm wondering how that is determined and then how you disseminate that information and if there's conflict over that. And then if you still allow what you consider fake news um, to be out there. The reason I created the government unit, Chup Tampilkan, or entire hoax unit, because I was the victim of fake news many times. Uh, black campaign, negative campaign. During 2018, uh, governor campaign, circulating the news that the candidate named Ridwan Kamil is marrying second wife. <laughs> And this is the photo of him, uh, have a photo with another lady, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's only one typical. So many. Yeah. So I created, I said, this, this has to stop. Uh, I'm thinking how to stop. Yeah. And the, the biggest hoax yeah, uh, happened in 2017 when there's a lady and the face was paid a condition declaring that she was beaten by a security official in at the airport of Bandung yeah so i was so you know so shocked because it's happening in bandung and all the elites including some of the the top official now quoting and feel sorry for the lady uh, and the lady happened to be an opposition to the government so circulating another uh, conspiracy theory this is because of the regime blah 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 Eight hours after that convention went viral, we found out that he was in the bed shape not because of get beaten, because of plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when you finish your plastic surgery, you have like so many problems uh, in your face. So <laughs> that's very humiliating because it was quoted by a top official. So I created this. Uh, Jabar Saber Hoax, yeah, it's a local word for Sapu Bersih Hoax. Uh, so I hire uh, 12 young people who understand how the algorithm of fake news. For example, if you put the photo and saying something, there is a there is a tracing technology that can trace directly to the first posting of that photo. Uh, yeah, for example, one photo, landslide. And the news circulating. 
this is land side to the to the Garut region area on weekend. So people beware. What happened? Nobody that weekend. Nobody came to Garut and stopping the business. When I check, that's the land side video in China. Yeah. So it's it's very bad. So I I creating this. So basically, smart uh, young gener young young team have a. a, a Tech uh, spec, yeah, uh, and skill to tracking photos, video, uh, fake news, but it's so many, especially during political time, very high up 2014, high up 2019, high up next year, I assume. So this is very important line of defense. So every Monday, yeah, every Monday, my team posted five top fake news that circulating the last week within West Java. Distributed to all line of communication, yeah, uh, to my people, so they understand. Oh, this is in China, not in West Java. This is uh, with different category of of hoax. Yeah, uh, we call it disinformation. We we have a category of irrelevance. There's so many things when it comes to to fake news and and hoax. So by doing this, uh, I'm. I, I I see my situation uh, in terms of communication is really under control. Problem is also a challenge. Sixty five percent the consumer of fake news uh, is housewife. Yeah, uh, ibu ibu. <clears throat> That's why I thought every time I go everywhere, ibu ibu, yeah, housewife. Yeah. Remember before you forward any news yeah if if the news is not coming to uh, mainstream media please uh, uh, hold your your urge to to share <laughs> yeah and and uh, and then now basically now is is really getting better you can imagine if i don't have this government unit of anti hoax anti hoax today so many things i have to clarify i have to it's very tiring that's why technology and this mindset giving me a good night's sleep because I have a system uh, that can make my 50 million people uh, situation is under control. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very. I don't got slides here. The most transparent bureaucracy in Indonesia award goes to West Java because. We open everything uh, to public. You can check my budget. You can check whatever. Yeah, uh, and uh, accept what we call it uh, uh, certain information. For example, like like the land certificate of government uh, asset. I cannot release that to public unless asked by court or by uh, special administrative procedure that I have to release the information because. There is a land and you know uh, uh, property mafia will try to make the uh, the bad things to, to my asset, for example. Other questions, please. Coming behind you, Elsa, right behind you. <clears throat> my name is Elsa Palarpodi from Rumah Indonesia, a non-profit organization based in Washington DC, which is one of the founder is your sister. Eva. Oh, my sister. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Um, my question is, um, there are, if I read it right, there are about 9 million Indonesian living overseas at the moment. 9 million. 9 million. And I don't know their uh, work, um, citizenship status. Um, many of them are no longer Indonesian because we are not allowed to have double citizenship. If you happen to be going to the higher office, would you fight for a double citizenship? Because many Indonesian who live overseas, they would love to be Indonesian and other citizen as well. And I will vote for you. <laughs> if... This is on record on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> I will vote for you. Um, the reason is not all your digital achievement, but because you say you will fight the radicalism. 
Thank you. Yes, thank you for the support. Uh, I cannot really answer directly, but the dual citizenship is uh, is happening. My son was born in New York, so I remember uh, I have to I had to leave to my country one month after his birth. Yeah, so I went to post office to get the passport because the baby was so small. I have to hold his head to the to the photo. So uh, the picture on the passport having my head <laughs> behind his head. Uh, by the 18 years old, I asked my son, hey, what's your opinion? But he decided, ah, I follow you. I just become Indonesian citizen. So we give up uh, the option up to 18 years old. Uh, so I think, uh, we have to see the benefit of having dual citizenship. I think maybe the pro uh, dual citizenship must present the argument uh, why other country can have dual citizenship, why Indonesia cannot, right? Uh, so I think uh, it's a good to have a discussion first. Nobody brought up this issue until maybe your organization not representing 9 million aspiration is a big voters it's a big numbers i think it's, it's an important issue because why so many diaspora would like to contribute to indonesia so many <clears throat> things happen. but now with the digital issue uh, revolution and communication i think contributing to indonesia is way easier okay uh but uh yeah the challenges is about the parliament so it is a political Everything is political. So I think the, the issue is very political. We need to have consensus among political parties. But I will speak on your behalf, yeah, uh, asking this one. I might, I might just note that uh, India has done a lot of work because they have a very large non-resident Indian population mm -hmm. outside of, of India. And so the foreign ministry has set up a special overseas citizens affairs unit and they look at incentives for how to bring back, make it easier for Indians to travel back to India, to invest, and many, many other incentives. And it, it, it would be a good thing for you guys to consider. Please. Hi, um, uh, Governor, it's, it's an honor to meet you. Thank you for, for joining us here in Washington, D.C. My name is Nikhil Parikh, and I run an advisory firm called Anise Partners, where we help companies and investors from the U.S. and Europe access growth opportunities in Southeast Asia. And the interesting thing is that we do hear a lot of interest in the Indonesia region. Um, but one of the challenges as is widely known is that it is difficult to do business in Indonesia. But particularly in the sectors that you've identified, um, be it energy, EV, digitalization, that is an area that we feel there's, there's a significant opportunity for partnerships between the West and Indonesia. And you know, probably different from some of the legacy industries like natural resources, minerals that have more of that political component to it. So my question for you, being someone who is much much digital forward, how would you, or what is your recommendation for really bridging that gap or bridging that connection between the West and those opportunities in the digital space? Because I would argue digital is a very global um, uh, ecosystem versus just focused on one country. And I'd like to see more of that cross-communication, investment, knowledge sharing between Indonesia and, and the West? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'm very proud to say the, the usage of digital uh, in Indonesia is very, very high. Not as an inventor, but as a user. So we, we use, we create apps and many things. For example, yeah, a housewife in Indonesia, they serve food to the husband and the children. If they have extra, they can sell online without leaving the home because there is an app to pick up the homemade food. Yeah, and there is an app for marketing the homemade extra food from the, the best food is the mom food. Yeah? Uh, there's an app to do the cash flow business for that kind of SMEs, micro, so many things uh, of apps happening uh, in Indonesia right now. Yeah, uh, I remember there was one expat from Canada. 
they they left Indonesia after the the assignment and said, Ridwan, I'm trying to open a bank account. It takes three months in my home country. If I was in Bandung, it's only five minutes without going to office. I have new bank account. So, so this have advanced also the use of digital now in Indonesia. So uh, as a leader, I know my limit, yeah, because uh, some of the issue that you raised was the domain of the central government. But I always personally come to the rescue. I tell you two story. One, when I was a city mayor, there was an American company called UTC producing aerospace uh, technology products. They were about to leave to Malaysia because they, they're having that difficulties. I said, hold on, Mr. CEO, what's your problem? I'm the city mayor of Bandung. Uh, I will solve your red tape. I'm using this word. I can be your butler to fix your, your, your problem. And within three months, I'm lobbying on behalf of this UTC. And now UTC happily operating in Bandung, exporting uh, this one, exporting uh, parts, not sell in Indonesia, not sold in Indonesia, but to, to the globe. That's one story. Second story, just yesterday, uh, Amazon Web Services, I said, are you happy? I'm happy, Mr. Governor. We have a growth of this digital because everybody now going cloud for their business, personal and everything. They opened three data centers uh, in Indonesia, but having two problem, tax issue. So on behalf of Amazon Web Service, I met Ibu Sri Mulyani, the Ministry of Finance to lobby, to, to explain, Bu, the regulation is really hindering the digital uh, uh, investment. You have to see from their perspective, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, they solve the issue. The second issue is about renewable energy because data center need to access green and the PLN doesn't provide. And uh, if uh, AWS not using green in America, they have problem, they said, yeah. So I also fix this problem. So my point is I'm helping in my limited capacity. But when it comes to national level, what I can do best is only lobbying, try to have an argument with central government. Uh, so at the end of the day, we can have a better uh, environment for, for investment. I'm also a stronger belief that Indonesia, I told Pa Ambassador, we have to have a brand consultant bringing the image, the, the brand called Indonesia to the world. Because some of American also still only know Bali, right? Uh, compared to Indonesia. There's still a classical issue that need to be solved uh, by, by having a professional from the, the market that we want to sell. Uh, so basically, uh, we are getting better. If you research Omnibus Law Indonesia, you will see all the answer, majority already answered by this uh, super law of Omnibus Law. Governor, um, many Americans would be surprised to learn that roughly 60% of the Indonesian workforce is in the informal economy. And so there's a huge opportunity to develop SMEs and micro small enterprises. And you've done a huge amount in West Java to link up small businesses to wider markets, not only inside Indonesia, but even internationally. And maybe I think the audience would be interested to learn how you've done that. Yeah. <clears throat> it is exciting time. Yeah. 80% my economy activity are SMEs. Okay. Uh, so I have to be pro SME. I created a series of fundamental uh, policy. Number one, I created education institution called SME Export Campus, because SME they think they can only sell within the neighborhood. Okay, they think they can only sell within the city. They never think that they can sell to Singapore, to Philippines, or to US. Yeah, because. SMEs, they're thinking in limited market. So by having this campus, uh, we collaborate with Shopee, it's, uh, it's uh, e-commerce. We can educate that, hey, you have small business, but you can sell to Philippines, you can sell to Singapore. Uh, we educate how you take picture because you have to have a beautiful photo to, to, to attract the, the buyer, right? So there is inside the campus, there is a studio, photo studio. Or you bring your product, take a photo, and there is a, le a lesson uh, 
a course, how you get the bank for your export and so on and so on. So I think that's one uh, uh, support uh, to SME. Second, we create a loan that very low in interest. Yeah, uh, I have a bank uh, director here. Please stand up, Ibu, Ibu Tini. Uh, Ibu Tini, one of the responsibility that I put to her because I own 40% share as a governor. So <laughs> if, <laughs> if she wants to stay in her place, uh, she must follow my direction. After four years, the best regional bank of Indonesia is West Java Bank. Okay, Ibu Tini. Okay. <laughs> Double the dividend last time. I told her to give a lower rate program to uh, SMEs. Even I created a very unique, only in the world, I think in Indonesia, yeah? I created a micro loan given at the mosque, mm. at the church, at the Hindu temple. Mm. Because Indonesian people are very religious, they congregate within the religious place. And I, I give uh, an access to the religious preacher to, to bring the good news that please come to the mosque, let's pray to the Muslim pray, become very religious. And before you leave, there is an option for you to become better economic. Yeah. We call it uh, Masra credit system. It helps uh, 20,000 poor individual now can have a business. So this is very Indonesian uh, in context. So that's second support. The third support, I help marketing the SMEs. Remember, I have 20 million Instagram followers, right? So every day, I posted two products of SMEs of West Java to my Instagram story, okay? So many DM come to me, Mr. Governor, I have overwhelmed of uh, <laughs> order because of your Instagram story of 20 million. Thank you, Mr. Governor. I've been doing this for the last three years, especially during COVID. Yeah. And uh, the, the last one, I'm using the power of myself as an architect background governor to design the product of SMEs. So if you go to Indonesia, there is a watch designed by Ridwan Kamil, there is a shoe, there is a helmet, there is a Thai batik, limited edition Ridwan Kamil. I said, you. <laughs> You can use my name, but you you have to have a black and white permission. If you're SME, I make it to free. You take all the profit, but make sure uh, no immoral uh, <laughs> business. So I cannot lend my name to discotic business, for example. Okay, uh, but for fashion, for design product. Okay. So this is, for example, the shoes that I design, uh, Ridwan Kamil signature. So. I'm using full force, Pablo, not only the policy of education, budgeting, credit, using my own branding with the capability of this million of followers to help my SME, especially during COVID. So those of you who want to buy that snappy Ridwan Camel motorcycle, there's a sign-up sheet outside. Yeah. Uh, please. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for speaking with us. My question is, how often and in what ways do you interact and speak with local activists? Uh, for example, environmental activists, social justice activists, uh, and, and, uh, and how, do you, uh, how do you interact with them? How do you learn from them? You have to remember, coba slide profile saya cukup. Before I become a mayor and governor, I was a social activist, number two. Okay. I founded three civil society movements. So I tell all the activists, look, I'm Ridwan Kamil, a governor, but in my heart, in my mindset, I'm still the civil society activist. So I'm thinking like they are thinking okay? uh, about, you know, creating a better democracy, better interaction, better voice for uh, moms, uh, for example. Uh, so we created, it's not a regular thing, but I'm very open. My house, uh, for example, Cup Coba Tampilkan Tapas. So every month, I open my house to all uh, uh, stakeholders. 
but thematic. This week is an issue of, uh, uh, for example, SME. Next week, the topic, the activist is uh, uh, this one. Uh, the issue of uh, gender uh, empowerment, for example. The third week, we discuss the issue of radicalism, for example. So all this is activist work. Yeah, coming to discuss, expressing their uh, uh, activities and concern. And remember the government 3.0 that I mentioned, yeah? So I have an advisor, 20 strong advisor of me from macroeconomics. Uh, you know, is a professor from Boston uh, advising my macroeconomy, for example. I have an advisor from political, religious, before I make decision. And every department, I assign three posts to be the advisor from outside government official. One from business community, one from academic community, and one from civil society community. So only in West Java, we have the activist civil society as part of in-house decision maker in my bureaucracy. That's how I embrace uh, the question uh, of how I deal with uh, social activists as part of the the actor uh, designing the future of West Java better. Job Sekolah uh, Perempuan. Last week, we were awarded by the Ministry of Education because we have housewife school. Yeah. Sekolah Perempuan. Okay. Because in Indonesia, when they get married, they seem they stop edu educating themselves. And this is not a good. So I created the last four years a host wife uh, school in the village center. Okay, We have a curriculum of psychology, curriculum of small business, including the curriculum detecting radicalism. Because host mom is like... Uh, CCTV, right? <laughs> if you happen to be a suspected new neighbor with suspicious activity, you have to have a skill, yeah, profiling whether this is a good new neighbor or probably some bad new guys is trying to infiltrate to your neighbor. Okay. So this is the school run by my wife. My wife is very busy, busier than the husband. <laughs> Uh, she received the award on my behalf. And again, Indonesian culture, yeah, they like to congregate. So all the housewives from all rural, pa, I invited to have inauguration, like, like in George Washington today, the inauguration. So every six months, 3,000 housewives all over West Java coming to the ceremony of inauguration. And as a governor, I put like, you know, the this kind of gesture, yeah? that you are past and now you are the alumni of housewife uh yeah, this one so so my point is this is coming from the result of me listening to activism activists in my open house saying hey what's your program for gender empowerment hmm, so okay let's heal and let's collaborate and we ah this is the housewife i remember charles one housewife bringing uh sheep because every day he has to feed the sheep right but he wants to go to school so he bring the sheep and tie to the <laughs> to the pole learning things for two hours and come back bring uh, the sheep also to to the uh, to the lawn for example uh, this is my legacy of gender empowerment got award from korean government i got grant from korean government and last week we got Award for the best program gender empowerment in Indonesia. Wow. All right, I think we have time for one more question if there is one, please. My name is Christopher Lindsay. I'm with the International Trade Association that, func that focuses on construction, water, and sanitation. And we have offices in Indonesia and uh, laboratories there as well. I'm curious if you can put on your architect hat and talk a little bit about the efforts you've made to improve the overall uh, infrastructure, uh, buildings, uh, as well as maybe improve kind of the access to water and sanitation in West Java. Yeah. When I was an architect, I was an advisor to the governor of Jakarta. 
So in Jakarta, when I was an architect, uh, before you got the building permit, you have to pass the green code. Uh, in, in in here, apa Pak Haris call di sini namanya? LED. Uh, in in America call LED. In Indonesia call green ship. It's basically the same. Yeah, to have to make. You have to prove your design is green performance yeah, with platinum, gold, and silver category and so on. So I was the advisor. So when I was city mayor, I set up the same thing, non-existent before. So as a governor, now I make it 27. This is how I do it. I start with Bandung, then I copy and make it mandatory to 27 within my jurisdiction to have this uh, engineer expert in building permit and has to pass the green building code. So this is how I protect, again, the future of our planet using the policy in technology of building. Second one I want to inform also, uh, and this is also another legacy. I am I am having the longest river in West Java called Citaru. Coba cukup tampilkan. 2017 labeled the dirtiest river in the world. We were so ashamed, so embarrassed, yeah, because the French YouTuber went on this pile of garbage along the river and published to the world. And Pak Jokowi also feel embarrassed, but I wasn't a governor yet. In 2018, I was assigned by Pak President. You have to fix this in your term, okay? So I started very Indonesian government 3.0 collaboration. In Indonesia before, river belong to the uh, public works department. But to fix this dirtiest river in the world, I have to invite military. So I created, Charles, your military, 22 district led by 22 colonels of army to fix this. So it seems like it doesn't make sense, yeah? but it's solvable. Why? Before, thousands of industry, they polluted my river without fear because they can, sorry, bribe the official and they can use like local uh, tags to, to scare the, the official, but not with military, right? Uh, so the military now, I give them power. If you caught any factory polluting our river, you can... Ngecor uh, apa Pak Haris, bisa Inggrisnya. You can you can block the pipe with with concrete. Yeah, it's a punishment. It's a it's a. It's a. After four years, Charles, sixty cases brought to the court because I'm very serious of the offender. Yeah, uh, the status now from heavily polluted river now lightly polluted. Uh, the end the the endemic uh, fish suddenly came again, uh, the, the children now swim again in this river. And the issue is now, uh, I was awarded by Pak Jokowi to present this achievement at COP26 uh, in Glasgow, just to tell the UN, look, we are doing the good jobs according to your standard, but the story of Indonesia is collaboration. It's but not the scientific thing, it's but bringing the military, uh, the police, the you know the court to 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 fight this thing so now is clean uh and the end of my term i will deliver this achievement to our president's responsibility all right um i think we're going to wrap this up uh, the governor generously has agreed to stay for a little while longer if anybody has any questions or uh, wants to take a <laughs> photograph with him and get 20 million followers um, <laughs> But um, I, Governor, I just on everybody's behalf, I just want to thank you for a really inspiring afternoon of of just you've you've done so much for the people of, of West Java, and I know that the people of Indonesia, whatever happens next year, they can count on your leadership for years and years to come. So uh, please join me in in extending a very warm thanks to. You. Okay, well done.